In this week's bike news, Trek is raising its prices, BMC unveils new race bikes, Chris Froome, well I highly recognise him in his new race kit, and there's more info on new bikes coming from Cannondale and Cervelo this year. So let's dive in. Now firstly, let's start with some new bikes. And in my previous episode of Bike News, link down below if you missed it, I'll talk about what new bikes might be coming this year from both Candel and Cervelo. Now on the latter, we saw a spy shot on Twitter of what looks to be the new R5, their all round lightweight aero race bike. And on the U-size list of approved equipment, we can see a new bike. Now, just to back up a little bit, the UCI approves all bikes used in the Pro Peloton, so Trek, Specialized, Canyon, they all have to get bikes signed off by UCI, basically to make sure that all the bikes used in the Pro Peloton are following the same rules and restrictions that the UCI puts out in its uh, quite thick rule book. And on this list, which is displayed on their website, so I'll put a link down below, you can go and check it out yourself. And then onto Cannondale, and I talked about the likelihood of them launching a new Synapse or even a Super 6 Evo Classic in my previous video, because in June, they are celebrating their 50th anniversary. So an ideal opportunity to launch a new bike. And again, looking at the UCI's list of approved equipment, we can see some interesting additions late last year. A Super 6 Evo SE and a Super 6 Evo CX. Now what are these bikes, what might it be? Well, we have a clue here because the SE tag, while it's never been used with a Super 6 Evo race bike before, has been used on their Synapse endurance bike and over on their mountain bike division as well. And it usually amounts to a different specification, a different list of parts, tires, components, and also uh, different paint jobs to what you normally see in the catalog. So we might be getting the same Super 6 Evo frame we know, but with different group sets, uh, different wheels and tires, and maybe some more subdued paint jobs. Um, that's my guess. Until we see the bikes actually launch, I have no idea what they might look like, but that's probably an indication of what might be coming. So not a new bike, not a new frame as such, but a new build, maybe a new collection of builds available. Um, probably at a similar price point to what we currently get, but just different uh, flavors of builds, different tires and so on. And more interesting perhaps is a Super 6 Evo CX. Now CX of course stands for Cyclocross, and the company already has a Cyclocross bike, the Supercross. So could they be replacing the Supercross with a Super 6 Evo CX? So taking that aero optimized frame and bring it over to Cyclocross, increasing the tire clearance at the rear stays and the fork, or will it be more of a light all road, very light gravel bike for a racier option for people who don't want the top stone carbon or synapse for kind of chunkier gravel? Um, I don't know to be honest, I don't know what they might be doing. It doesn't seem the most obvious move, as I said earlier, because they have the Super Cross or Super X, how you pronounce it, for cyclocross and they have their gravel bikes. So producing a more off-road orientated version of their race bike seems a slightly odd move, but I can't wait to see what they actually do with it. So those are two guaranteed new bikes from Kanzel. Not new bikes as such, but new builds. Uh, no details on when they're launching, but they're on the UCI list, so they must be coming fairly soon. Now the biggest story this week is that Trek is following in the footsteps of Canyon, Specialized, Giant and other brands in raising their prices for 2021. Now I talked in the past in a previous video, link down below if you missed that, about the impact of the world situation at the moment with the pandemic, shipping demand, shortages of parts and raw materials, currency fluctuations, all contributing to increased prices, not just of bikes, but food and everything else we consume. And Trek are now issuing price increases for their 2021 range, which were launched last year. First details on this story came to me over the weekend from a source inside the industry who works for a retailer. And then I emailed Trek yesterday and they confirmed this. And we're looking at between 10 and about 15% price increases across the board. I've asked Trek for an official statement, but nothing coming yet. But if they do issue one at a time of this being published, I'll put it down below. But at the moment, all we know is that prices are going up due to everything in the world at the moment, Brexit, currency fluctuation, shipping costs of between 10 and 15%. But what's that actually mean on a bike? Well, let's take the Emonda SL6 Pro that was launched last year. So brand new platform, lightweight climbing focused bike. So full carbon frame and fork, carbon wheels, and a Shimano Ultegra mechanical group set. Now at launch, this bike cost 3,350 pounds. So a very competitive price point. But now, if you look on the Trek website, it's costing 3,700 pounds. 
so a big price increase. And I think to put that into context, if you're in a market for a bike of around £3,000, you set your budget at about £3,000, you might better justify going over that by a few hundred pounds if the bike really appeals to you. But now it's £700 over £3,000, it's probably a bit of a stretch if you're really maxing out your budget at around £3,000. So it really puts it into another sort of category. And what it does as well, move it into line with other bikes in that price range, particularly the giant TCR Advanced Pro 1 disc that you know I reviewed here on my channel, link it above if you missed that. That now costs £3,799, but an extra £99 gets you basically the same bike with a dual-sided power meter, which is about an £800, £1,000 upgrade. So that price increase clearly makes the bike less attractive than it was before, and even less attractive when you compare it to other rivals in that price range, which is now competing with. Now, if your budget is pegged at 3,200 or 3,300 ish, then you can get the Trek Amonda SL6, which is basically the same bike as the SL6 Pro, but you don't get the carbon wheels. So to put that into context, your 3,350 pounds previously got you your Trek Amonda SL6 Pro with carbon wheels. Now for 3,200 pounds, get the same bike with aluminum wheels. So not looking as good as it used to be. But Trek isn't alone here. I think other brands will follow in the footsteps of Trek, Giant, Canyon, Specialized, and others in raising their prices this year. It's only a matter of when and not if. Onto something a bit brighter. Hopefully the World Tour racing will resume this year, depending on how the COVID-19 pandemic is going. And a big move this year is Chris Froome, after a long, long time at Team Sky, is now riding for the Israel Startup Nation. Um, it's a big move for him in the twilight of his career and a full new kit, so you hardly recognise him, it'd be harder to spot him in the peloton compared to before. So Chris Froome has switched from Pinarello to Factor, from Oakley to Skycon, and Cask to HJC Helmet. But the biggest change is the bike. After years and years on the Pinarello Dogma, F8, F10, F12, he's now on the Factor and their Ostro Fam, their lightweight aero bike, pretty much like the Tarmac F07, in being super lightweight, but also as aero as possible without being a full aero bike. They're claiming just 780 grams for the frame, which is definitely at the lighter end of the spectrum, and you get all the aero enhancements you'd expect on a modern road bike. So a wide stance fork, an integrated one-piece handlebar and stem, drop rear stays, and aero-shaped tube profiles everywhere else. And the company claims, with a full Shimano Durace Di2 group set and their own black ink wheels, that the bike easily builds down to 6.8 kilograms the UCI weight limit for all race bikes in the World Tour Peloton. And we do know that Team Sky, and now Ineos Grenadier, have struggled to get their Dogma F12 down to that weight limit, and they've even resorted to using lightweight carbon fire wheels, which are sub 1,000 grams or thereabouts, to get the weight as low as possible, or to get as close to that 6.8 kilogram weight limit. So I guess the big question is, will Chris Froome ride any differently? Will his performance be any different on this bike compared to his Dogma F12 he raced last year? Well, time will tell, I guess. We'll have to wait and see how he gets on with his new bike and equipment partners if the season hopefully unfolds this year. More race news and BMC, the Swiss manufacturer of the team machine and road machine and other bikes, are now sponsoring the French outfit Agi2R Citron. Uh, so a big move for them and a big move for the bikes as well. Now in the past, the bikes were either red, black, or if you're Greg van Avermaet, the Olympic champion, they were gold. But for the Agi2R Citroën team, they're white with a nice splash of red across the top tube and a red one-piece carbon fibre handlebar and stem. So I share some pictures on their social media of a team machine being built up and it looks really good. We've got a Campag super record 12-speed EPS group set with disc brakes and I fully expect the team to use disc brakes at all races. Now I might be wrong, but BMC have been one of the manufacturers really uh, embracing disc brakes and we've seen the teams they sponsored in the past, mostly using disc brakes. So I expect this new team to use disc brakes on all their BMC race bikes. Uh, really smart looking bikes actually. I think they look really good and should go quite well with a new team kit, which looks pretty bold, it has to be said. So yeah, new partners, new teams. So quite a few new looking bikes and team kits this year and riders switching from different teams to other teams. So it should be a different looking peloton this year when the racing resumes. The other race news I'm sure being announced fairly soon, but I'll keep you updated here on my channel, Just Ride Bikes. And finally, it's birthday year for Moots, who this year celebrate their 40th anniversary. 
Now you might remember I reviewed the Thamute RSL disc, link above if you missed that. A fantastic example of their craftsmanship and their experience with producing high-end titanium frames. And to celebrate their 40th anniversary, they've launched a special edition head badge. And it looks amazing, I really want one. So any bike ordered in 2021 will come with a special 40th anniversary badge, making bikes produced this year definitely collector's editions. So if you're in the market for a moot, this could be the year to buy one just to get this head badge alone. Alongside this head badge, the company says there are other plans to celebrate its birthday this year, so more hopefully to come from Moots as they celebrate their 40th anniversary. So there we go then, just my quick roundup of interesting cycling news happening this week. But I think the Trek bike price increase is probably the biggest news this week, but let me know what news is interesting you at the moment in the comment section down below. That's all for now, make sure you hit that like button, if you enjoy watching it, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. More reviews coming out on a weekly basis, so make sure you hang around if you want to see those. But that's all for now though. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again next time.